Hello. We're gonna be starting soon. How do you like our new studio? Hmm. Today the TV and Kassan Yabasun. We're on TV. TV. Alright. 
my hair? How many people like my hair? Never want blonde hair in my life. I decided to wear blonde hair today. Please, in the comments, let me know what you like about my hair. Okay. So, good evening, everybody. And welcome to Raina Speaks. It's another Thursday at 8 p.m. And here we are. As I told you, we'll be upgrading our studio. I'm sure you can see upgrading working. Mm. Very soon, we have people to interview and everything. Please, my blonde hair. I'm very interested in the comments about my blonde hair. All right, so let's go right ahead. We're starting today. And we're going to be talking about, am I a leader or a follower? Um, sometimes we do not know where we really belong. And in this world today, we mostly think that everybody is a leader. And we must accept that that is actually not very, very true. Not everybody is a leader and nobody, not everybody is called to be a leader. So we are going to see the differences in who is a leader, who is a follower. And by the way, just so that you know, there's nothing wrong with being a follower. In fact, it is one of the most highest places you can think of. It is just that we do not, we do not show it too much. That's why. Um, the disciples were, were followers. Um, Paul was a follower. There are so many people who are followers. They look like they are not in the limelight. But I tell you, they control everything that happens. I remember in training college, I was a, an entertainment prefect. And I had an assistant. And she was marvelous. So most of the times, you have people hiding behind the scenes and doing the work. But the one that we see is the leader. And so we think, oh, that's all that there is, there is to it. If you do not have good followers, you cannot be a good leader. So, the question is, am I a leader? Am I a follower? If I know where I am or what I am, it makes me able to do it very, very well. All right. Now, don't forget to say hi or hello, to like, to comment, to share. And we are also live on YouTube at Reina Speaks. Welcome to all Palm TV watchers. Welcome to all our Facebook um, watchers. And welcome to all our YouTube watch watchers. We are going right ahead. Some of the greatest leaders you'll ever meet aren't even aware of their own leadership. And so that's why we're going to give you a few points so that you look at yourself, compare yourself and say, am I a leader? Am I a follower? Am I a leader? Am I a follower? Let's go right ahead. Number one. One thing that shows us that you are a leader is this. I'm going to start from the end and build up to the top. You do not mind sharing the glory of achievement with others and are quick to reward those who deserve it and reprimand those who don't. You do not mind sharing the glory of achievement with others. Every leader's hope and dream is that anyone who follows them becomes as great or greater than them. Jesus said, greater works than what I have done will you do. That is a sign of a leader. Anybody who struggles with um, not being, who doesn't want the people around them to grow, doesn't have leadership qualities every good leader wants the people around them to rise to achieve and they are the people who rather reward those who do that i mean they will also reprimand those who don't get to where they are supposed to but one of the the signs the biggest signs of a leader is you do not mind sharing the glory of achievements they will say we, we are we are grateful for achieving this but I could not have done this on my own. Always look for that. There, there are always people helping the leader. And the leader always acknowledges those people. Number two is, as a leader, you do not mind doing menial jobs. You do not mind doing menial jobs. You, you don't have a problem with sweeping. You don't have a problem with cleaning. You do not have a problem doing the jobs that, in quote, are for the subordinates. If you came to office and somebody was supposed to um, get water, fill the barrel, whatever it is, it needs to be done. And the leader needs it to be done, full stop. And once the leader needs it to be done, he will do it. He will do it. He or she <laughs> will do it. They don't mind who does what as far as it is done. Anybody who is having an issue with doing jobs that are supposedly not for leaders may not be a leader so don't forget they don't mind doing menial jobs all right number three is as a leader you are interested in the private lives of people you work with 
or would like to work with because you know it will play a part in their work. Every leader wants to know about the private lives of the people they work with. Whether they are married, if they are not married, why? Um, where do they live? How do they live? Every leader wants to know what's going on in the private lives of the people they work with because they know that whatever goes on in their private life will be translated into their work life or into whatever project it is that um, they are doing with you. So every leader, someone who has leadership qualities, wants to know what's going on in your life. Are you okay? You were sick the last time. Are you well? Um, what's up with your wife? What's up with your fiance? How is church? How are your parents? Is your sibling okay? They want to know those things so that they know how to relate with you and to make sure that it does not eat into your um, work that you are doing with them. Number four. You make more leaders and always want to pull people up with you. Every leader knows for a fact that they cannot do the work alone and that there's going to be a time when our feeble bodies will give up. There's going to be a time when they are sick. There's going to be a time when they are too busy to handle every single thing. So every leader always wants to make sure that there are more leaders around them. People they can delegate to and give uh, responsibilities to and be sure that once I've given this responsibility to this person or that person, I am sure that that person can do it, if not exactly as I have done, their own way, but making sure that it is done. So every true leader always wants more leaders and wants to pe pull people up with them. Number five, you can work for free sometimes because, because your joy is in the end product and it's at success. I remember a long time ago when um, I started doing makeup, I would go around and say, do you want me to do your makeup? I say, we don't have money. I say, I'll do it for free. Sometimes I will force you to let me do your makeup for free. I used to be a wedding planner as well. I would force you to let me do your wedding planning because I just wanted to see the result. I, I, I like to admire what the result is, how the bride looks, how her bouquet looks. I mean, the entirety of the thing. Every leader does not work for money. This is something a lot of people have to get. Leaders do not work for money. They work for their passion and they work for the, the joy. There's a certain feeling they get from the end product when they see it's perfect, it's done. It's, it's, I, I did that. That is what they are working for. The money comes as Matthew 6.33 will say, seek God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. So most leaders are seeking God and his righteousness. Then all other things get added. Followers are not like that. They came for money. So when you're not giving them money, there's a problem. But leaders always want to work for the joy of the thing that they are doing. All right. The next says, you are not easily influenced. Leaders are not easily influenced. You need facts and reality and answers to a whole lot of questions to be convinced. You cannot just walk up to a leader and say, oh, I think that. I think that if we do this business, it will work. Mm. Okay, so who owns the business? Who's running the business? H how did you hear about the business? How many people are doing the business? What is the success rate? Mm. So in Ghana, how many people have done it for you to know that it is successful? Leaders always want to make sure that they have the facts before they take a step. If it, most leaders, you would realize that in their secondary school days, in their university days, in their workplace, wherever they find themselves, are not easily convinced. They are not easy to just pull along. They are not easy to influence. They are not easy for you to just say, oh, okay, then let's do this. Let's try this. Leaders are not like that. They take their time. They assess. They think. They wonder. They ask questions. If you have somebody who is actually a leader, that person will ask you so many questions that the person is actually annoying. But that is how a leader behaves. The next one is you are, you are confident and passionate. We said just a little about that when we're talking about um, they don't work for money. You are conf leaders seem arrogant because they are confident in what they do. They are confident because they've asked the right questions. They've assessed and they've made the move. So they are confident that what they are coming to do will work no matter how it looks. 
most people who start businesses are mostly leaders because they are so confident they are so passionate that even though the risks exist they are willing to overlook the risk and take the move so you are confident you are passionate you are convinced that you are going to make it once you set your, your standard being confident means moving with assurance so like i said you know that what i'm coming to do will work oh but this thing will it work i remember when uh we started back in schools many years ago and people said nobody would bring their three-month-old children to us to take care of who brings a baby to school i, I mean it was strange but today all over Obwasi, people are copying back in schools and they are accepting children we were confident that what we were starting would work because there was the need there. And even though there was a risk of th something people had never seen before, we knew that by the grace of God, it will work. And it did. Number, I don't know what number I am on now, but the next point says you genuinely care about others. I've, I've, I've said that. You, you have leaders spend time with people. They, 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 they want to see people rise. They want to see people grow. And they really, what, they feel your pain. They feel your joy. They feel your uncertainty. They feel your confusion. They really, really care about the people they work with. If the person you are working with is, is a leader, you may think the person is nosy. Because the person will ask you a lot of questions. But what the person is trying to do is make sure you are comfortable enough so that you can do the work well. They really genuinely care about people and want to make sure that people are always all right. Number eight is this. Even though it is very scarce these days, but a true leader keeps that, that um, characteristic. And it says, you treat people with respect. A true leader does not segregate people or categorize people into jobs. This one is a cleaner, no respect. This one is, um, is an officer of law, respect. This one has no degree, res no respect. This one has degree, respect. Leaders, real leaders, people who have leadership within them, do not do that. They know that it takes the cleaner, it takes, it, just as much as it takes the cleaner, it takes the um, security guard, same way it takes the manager, it takes the director, it takes the head of department to work. They know that all these people play their own roles and their own part. And so they respect everybody and the job that they play. They do not have highs and lows. They just see human beings. Real leaders just see human beings. They don't see rank. They don't see money. They don't see status. They see human beings who are there to help and make sure that everything is working. The next point says you have a positive attitude. Leaders have a positive attitude. When people are being pessimistic, they are being optimistic. They see solutions and not problems. Most of them will say, okay, so while everybody's whining, so what can we do about it? The last time I realized that there was this person here, what if we ask this person, would that person be able to help us? Most leaders see solutions or look for solutions or such, their main aim is the solution and not the problem. So while people are whining, people are complaining, they are looking for a solution. And that's why it always looks like they are always right. Because for them, once they see a problem, they start looking for a solution. There's another point that is going to come up. Maybe I, I should talk about it right now. Most leaders solve issues before the, the, the problems come. That's why I said they ask, they ask so many questions that they are prepared for a rainy day. Anytime something comes, they are prepared for it. Because they've thought about it, they've thought it through, they've, they've, they've wondered, they said, okay, what if while I'm doing this, this comes? What if while I'm doing this, this appears? What if while I'm doing this, this person comes to interrupt? They've thought about the north, the south, the east, the west sides of it all. And so they always have the solutions for problems that don't even exist. That's how leaders are. This is something most people don't like, but leaders insist on. They insist on excellence and details. Leaders are very, very particular about doing excellent work and detailed work. If you see a leader that is angry, most of the time, it is because somebody did a shoddy work or somebody did not pay attention to a particular detail. 
most people think that oh this small detail what will it do i mean we've done all the 99 percent uh, well why don't we just ignore this one percent that does not have um anything to do with i mean one percent dear but every leader knows that that one percent can bring down that 99 percent you have worked on that five percent can bring down the 95 percent you have worked on so they always want to make sure that all the details are where they should be they insist on they insist on excellence because they know that excellence is the only thing that can drive you to the top excellence is the only thing that can make you see the thing that makes you stand out everybody is frying egg everybody is frying egg why should we come and buy your egg what is different about the egg frying when i got to egg fryer number one it was cold pots small table uh, little onions and tomatoes that have been cut into bowls and they've all won gloves and they are uh, taking it so they are being hygienic what is going to make you stand out number one it is not by a gutter I, I always you know i always ask myself that in gutter why is it that it looks like the people who sell food they must be by gata and agata before they sell i don't understand but we'll come to that next time yours is not by the gutter that's one detail that you have um you made you higher than some of them number two yours is not fried on coal pot it's fried in a little you know something something tiled kakra we even have something we call um they are flat burners now where you can fry egg you see when we come yours is a flat the the fact that i've not even seen that kind of flat burner is going to bring me to buy the egg because all the rest are using coal pot i'm using i think it's called a grill or something oh ask rafael He's the chef, you know. The flat burner, something black flat. They fry it on it now. So when I, Mimi, will be that. So when I get, I'm like, ah, this egg must have a certain taste. Since it is not being fried in a frying pan that looks like it has fallen down 300 times. And they have used stone to knock it into position. Maybe my spatula is different. You know, I'm a makeup artist and I realized that everybody was just using brushes. And I sometimes buy things from AliExpress. So what I did was I went to search for brushes. And when I got there, I realized that there's, there's this brush that is very colorful. They have brushes that are very colorful. One brush has maybe red, green, gold on the same brush, the handle. And the edges, the, the hair, the fair part of the, the, the brush also have different colors and I bought it. Every time I took out those brushes to do a bride's face, she just lit up. Hey, I've never seen these kind of brushes before. They are so colorful excellence and detail something small very looks like it doesn't matter it's something that can light up somebody's world so they insist you insist on excellence you realize that details matter to you you realize that good finished work matters to you it's because you are a leader that's why it matters to you you realize that the next point is that you realize that others follow your example the most powerful form of leadership isn't persuasion or argument or force, but example. Whether times are good or bad, people notice who's present, who's effective, who's working hard without distraction. People follow your example. They know that when times are hard, as for this person, the person will keep moving. No matter what is happening in the company, we can guarantee this person is going to show up. No matter how bad it looks, this person is going to have some optimistic view that we can use always has a solution when you are doing something good people will copy and i gave the example when we started back north schools it looked like why are we trying to bring three months old babies into school why are we trying to bring uh, children into school children have to be two years before they go to school now everybody here wants to start the same thing the same thing because they realize that it's a good example you see so people others will follow your example we were the, one of the first schools to do graduation to do um international day career day um ice cream day popsicle i mean name it now most schools in obuasi do the same thing following our example it means that we are good leaders and so people want to follow our example the next point is you are a good listener and people confide in you these are two strengths that most leaders have they have the ability to listen to take detail and they have the ability to keep secrets every good leader can keep a secret so hard so strong that you would not even know that that conversation happened 
So you are a good listener. People find themselves coming to you comfortably. They don't mind talking to you. They know you have good advice. They know you have a listening ear, a crying shoulder. It means that you are a good leader. It means that you have leadership within you. People feel comfortable expressing themselves to you because they see something that you probably don't even know that you have as a leader. When you are a good listener, you are easy to confide in and people seek your advice. People ask you, what should we do next? How should we do it? When should we do it? It means that you have the qualities of a leader. You are probably a leader and not a follower. People count on you. If people rely on you, it follows that they trust you to follow through and deliver on your promises. One thing I've realized with people is they don't go, they don't do good on their promises. People make you a promise and then when something happens, they back out. I'm going to be with you forever. How many of us have heard that one? I mean, it is so common that now when you just say it, I'm just sitting there, I'm like, eh, this is your forever in your own dictionary. How long is forever? But most leaders don't say something they don't mean and know they cannot do. Most leaders will stick out their neck once they've made the promise. They will make sure that they follow through. Sometimes they go through very difficult times that may prevent them from honoring their promise, but they don't shake. You don't know it because they make sure they fulfill your promise. But some of them have been through very trying times to get you, to get that thing they said they would get to you, to you, but they don't say anything. Sometimes a leader has promised that, oh, um, I'll make sure that this next program coming up, you can go and upgrade yourself. Along the way, something happens and they spend too much money that they may not be able to take you for that course. But because they have promised you, they, go, they move heaven and earth to make sure that the promise they made to you must happen. So people can count on you. People know that as for this person, once they've said it, they will do it. As for this person, once they've promised it, they will do it. As for this person, when we get there, this person will be there. When we get there, this person, this person, you will not be late. So please, let's hurry up. This person, you will not be late. This person, I believe that the person knows where we are going and this person will act accordingly. I know that when I take this person to this place, it will go well. The person will not misbehave. People can count on you. That shows that you are a leader. Now, you offer advice and counsel. I think we've talked about it um, in a previous point. Sometimes nobody is even asking you to offer advice and counsel. But when you see the way uh, the person is going, you see this one, uh, he's going to fall in a pit. And you come and bring all his trouble and we we'll all get some. Come, let me advise you. See, this thing you are doing, it won't help any of us. Stop. Stop. I've said stop. And I know that most leaders, once they say stop and you don't stop, when you are getting into the thing, they just hold their hands and say, mm hmm May I said it. It's left small for the person to drop inside the pit. Let's wait. Maybe they will learn through the many things that they will suffer. Because some people don't like advice. But most leaders like to give advice and counsel, whether it is solicited or not. And once they give the counsel, most of the time, it would be okay, it would be correct. Our last, um, our last um, point for today is that they have an open mind and seek out other people's opinions. If people are drawn to you because you are open to others, other people's opinions, you are a leader. Leaders are not afraid for people to air their views. Anybody who has a problem with people airing their views is not a leader. And this may not sound nice, but that is the truth. Leaders know confidently. They've done their research. They've done their question asking. And they know that everybody is not the same. Everybody will have different opinions about the same thing. You may be surprised to know that sometimes we are all saying the same thing. Just that we are saying it differently. If you take your time to listen to that opinion, you may even get back to the point that you were trying to make. So if you have a leader or somebody who looks like a leader, somebody aspiring to be a leader, and that person doesn't know how to accept people's opinions, does not know how to accept what people think, what people say, or the suggestions that they give, that person may not be a leader. That person may be a follower, but has been put in that position by promotion's sake or climbing up a ladder so the person is there but every leader does not have any problem with listening to the opinions of others 
All right, so today we've talked about 10 points. I'm going to go over them quickly. No, we haven't talked about 10 points. We've talked about 16 points today. I'm going to go over them quickly, and then we'll be done for today. First point is, you. how do we know? Are you a leader? Are you a follower? How do we know what you are? Number one is, you don't mind doing menial jobs. Number two is, you do not mind sharing the glory of achievement with others and are quick to reward those who deserve it and reprimand those who don't. The next is, you are interested in the private lives of people you work with or would like to work with because you know it will play a part in the work that they do. The next point is, you make more leaders and always want to pull people up with you. The next is that you can work for free sometimes because your joy is in the end product and its success. Also, you are not easily influenced. You need facts and reality and answers to a whole lot of questions to be convinced. Next point is you are confident and passionate. You, are, you genuinely care about others. You treat people with respect. You have a positive attitude. You insist on excellence. Others follow your example. You are a good listener and people confide in you. People count on you. You offer advice and counsel. And the last one is that you have an open mind and seek out other people's opinions. So don't worry. Next week we'll be talking about followers and the signs to know whether I'm a follower. And I must encourage you, there is nothing wrong with being a follower. Like I said in the beginning, you have power that you do not know that you have. And next week, we'll be talking about what makes you a follower. How do you know that you are called to be a follower? I'm telling you, not everybody on the planet can be a leader. Some of us will be followers. So let me see if I, I got some comments today. And then we can take it from there. Okay. Akasia says, true talk. Send the details, no? Nana Raba says, pillar of strength. Nana Abba, the ladder of leadership. Cindy says, in Ghana, dear, most of our leaders are followers. Bam. <laughs> oh my goodness, they will not like to hear you say that. Okay, so that's what we have. Brenda, Brenda Bren says, great points. I'm sure the rest of the comments will come up as we go on all right so i would like to thank you all for watching and today i want to say a special thank you to some people on facebook um forgive me if i don't remember your name but let, next week god willing i'm going to list it and then tell tell you those people there are some groups um and good group admins that anytime i put up a flyer they immediately accept and, and air the flyer for me i'm very grateful for you princesses of the king um that's a group princesses of the king we have tell it all fabulous woman network moms united i'm very grateful for all these people obwasi today obwasi facebook is like that every time i put up a flyer they immediately um um accept it and let it go public i am very grateful forgive me if i didn't mention your name have you understood uh -huh. next week god willing i will list it all out and i'll say a very big thank you because because of you we are able to do what we do you are the ones that put us out there and we are very very grateful for 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 doing that i also want to say a special thank you to everybody who shares our flyers on your status on your facebook on your instagram on your tiktok on your twitter we are very very grateful god bless you and we are moving up to become a TV station. You should be excited about that because it is because of you that we have become who we are and we've come this far. God bless you so much. And don't forget, same time, same place, next week, right here in our new studio, we shall be meeting to, to talk about, am I a follower? We've talked about, am I a leader? Let me know if from the point you realize that you are a leader. And next week, let me know if you realize from the points that you are a follower. God bless you. See you next week. Bye.